As David Dow reports, the Twilight Zone became a nightmare. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're discussing 20 famous people who tragically died while performing. Of course, there's a lot of high winds that come over the top of the building, and that particular day the winds were up to 40 miles. I believe they were blowing at least 40 miles per hour. For this list, we'll be looking at the most famous entertainers who sadly passed away during their performances. Are there any that we left out that you know of? Let us know in the comments. Leonard Warren, opera singer. A lead baritone in the New York City Metropolitan Opera, Leonard Warren was known for the power and range of his voice. His career spanned just over 20 years. He sang in over 600 shows and had a recording contract with RCA Victor. In 1960, Warren played the role of Don Carlo in Giuseppe Verdi's La Forza del Destino. Reports claim that, at the end of the Act Three aria, upon his exit, Warren collapsed on stage. He was declared deceased by the Opera House physician merely 25 minutes later. Weirdly, the aria actually opened with the line, to die a momentous thing. Warren's cause of death was publicly announced as a stroke. Oh, it's are and are men. William Ellsworth Robinson, Magician William Ellsworth Robinson was a magician around the turn of the 20th century who took on the persona of a Chinese man and went by the stage name Chung Ling Su. Some pretty terrible stuff, we know. Robinson specialized in illusions and eventually became a wealthy vaudeville performer. One of his most famous illusions was the old bullet catch trick. A bullet is visibly loaded into a modified gun, which prevents it from actually leaving the chamber, and the magician, who's been holding some bullets of his own, pretends to catch the one seemingly fired from the gun. However, one night in 1918, the gun accidentally fired the bullet, fatally piercing Robinson's lung. Nick Menza, drummer. Nick Menza was the drummer for heavy metal band Megadeth between 1989 and 1998, and recorded with them for four of their studio albums. Though this was perhaps his most famous turn in the spotlight, Menza played for a total of 12 bands and had a fruitful career. However, his history reads like a series of unfortunate events. For one, he had to leave Megadeth because of medical issues and was never asked to return. Then, a tour was cancelled due to both the guitarist and the bassist's sudden deaths. There was also a power saw incident where he nearly lost an arm. In 2016, while playing on stage in California, Menza collapsed three songs into the show. He was pronounced dead from congestive heart failure at 51 years old. You know, Nick was a, a friend before he was even in the band. He was on tour with us on So Far So Good So What, and then obviously was an integral part of the big thrust of our of our legacy. You know, certainly the fans love him, and we loved him as a friend even when he wasn't in the band. Irma Bule, pop star. Irma Bule was a popular pop singer in Indonesia and frequently used snakes in her shows, draped over her shoulders, or handled as she sang. <laughs> However, with great snakes come great risks, and Bule was the unfortunate victim of her own sidekick. During a performance at a party in 2016, she was performing with a king cobra who had not been defanged. After accidentally stepping on the snake, it bit her in the thigh. Boulay was reportedly offered anti-venom by an offstage handler, but refused it and continued to perform for another 45 minutes. Unfortunately, the effects of the venom began causing her to throw up and have seizures. She died at just 29, shortly after being rushed to the hospital. Mitsuharu Misawa Mitsuharu Misawa was a Japanese professional wrestler. He debuted in 1981 under the persona of Tiger Mask, a popular gimmick in the field at the time which was based on a 1968 manga series. 
Misawa went on to have a rich career in the sport until 2009, at which time he told an interviewer that he wished to retire in two years' time. Four days later, on June 13, 2009, Misawa participated in a tag team match. During this match, Misawa took a back suplex from his opponent, after which he collapsed and was shortly pronounced dead at 46. The cause of death was deemed to be a fatal separation between the upper cervical vertebrae of his spine. Sib Hashian, Drummer Sib Hashian was a replacement drummer and best afro wearer for the band Boston in the late 1970s. He went on to record and perform with a number of artists, and in 2017, he was a guest drummer on a Legends of Rock-themed cruise. During a set aboard the ship, he collapsed on stage and could not be revived despite efforts. His cause of death was reportedly a heart attack. We all love Sibby so much, and he was a big part of my growing up. So uh, to be able to become a personal friend of Sibby was, was a big deal to me, but he just had a big heart. He would show up at our foundation events and help us out. Interestingly, one of Hashian's daughters, Lauren, married Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Johnson wrote a touching social media post in reference to Hashian upon his passing, referring to him as his second dad. Sam Patch, Daredevil. Known as the first daredevil in America to gain fame, Sam Patch made a name for himself by jumping from impressive heights. Sometimes referred to as the Jersey Jumper, Patch would leap into waterfalls or rivers from cliffs, bridges, and platforms. Sam Patch goes to the falls, screams out to the crowd, some things can be done as well as others, takes a few steps back, runs and takes a leap into the air, and then plunges feet first in his trademark straight as an arrow dive. Patch truly achieved the height of his career in autumn of 1829 with a jump into the Niagara River from a specially built 125-foot ladder. He became the first famous American daredevil after jumping into the river near the base of Niagara Falls. Later that year, on a Friday the 13th, Patch would jump into the Genesee River in what was oh so horribly advertised as Sam's last jump. Patch either jumped or fell from the platform, and his failure to achieve the proper entry coupled with a rapid temperature change from the descent are likely what caused his death at only 30 years old. Today, a leisure boat traveling along the Erie Canal bears Sam Patch's name. Tiny Tim, singer, musician. Herbert Boutros Kari, known professionally as Tiny Tim, was a singer, ukulele player, and musical archivist. Well, you see this, pal. Uh, the toast of Greenwich Village in his first appearance anywhere, Tiny Tim. You likely know him best from his falsetto cover of the 1929 song Tiptoe Through the Tulips, which is sometimes used in horror films to really creep everyone out. His career in music spanned from the early 1960s all the way to his death in the mid-90s. In September of 96, Tiny Tim had a heart attack at a ukulele festival in Massachusetts. He spent three weeks in the hospital and was advised not to perform due to a multitude of health concerns. Just one month after this, however, Tim took the stage at a gala benefit and suffered another heart attack on stage during the performance of his most popular song. Red Fox, actor. Born John Elroy Sanford, Red Fox was a well-known stand-up comedian and actor. My great-great-grandfather, one of the first black politicians in Mississippi. He ran for the border. <laughs> His long and illustrious career took him from dark nightclub stages to network television and film. He's perhaps best known for playing Fred Sanford in Sanford and Son, a series which aired from 1972 to 1977. Hello, Fred! Hello, Woody. Hello, Fred Sanford, and how are you today? Fine up to now. <laughs> Will you stop that? Okay, okay. I'm quite fine, Esther. And may I lie and say how nice it is to see you. <laughs> he also starred in a short-lived sitcom, The Royal Family, in 1991, and it was on the set of that show that he met his unfortunate end. Fox, then 68, was called in for rehearsals, but after running his lines, he collapsed. 
Eerily enough, it was believed he was joking at first, as his Sanford character was known for faking heart attacks. This one was real. Mark Sandman, singer, musician. Mark Sandman is perhaps best known for forming and fronting the alternative rock band Morphine from 1989 until his death in 1999. Hello, this is Morphine, and you are watching 120 Minutes on MTV. He was an eccentric, mysterious personality and was known for altering his instruments to achieve new and experimental sounds. During a performance with Morphine in Palestrina, Italy, Sandman collapsed on stage. At only 46 years old, he had had a heart attack, which was aggravated by stress and the elevated temperature of the venue. His impact on the music world is evident in the impressive amount of tributes that poured in following his death. I always see those guys when I want go to Boston, and it's always very bittersweet because I think in both directions, it immediately we're back in Palestrina again. John Eric Hexham, actor. John Eric Hexham was a promising up-and-comer when an accident on set ended his life abruptly. After moving to New York City in 1980 to pursue his dreams of stardom, he starred and co-starred on a few TV shows and smaller film productions before landing the role of a CIA operative on the series Cover Up. Better yet, we can listen in on his phone calls, put a transmitter in his car, and let him take us to the big guy. <laughs> I like that. You're starting to think like me. Oh, I hope not. During a lapse in the filming of the show's seventh episode, Hexum decided to play with the handgun his character was given, which was loaded with blanks. Hexum, thinking they were harmless, emptied all but one, with the intention to play a game of mock Russian roulette. The blank's impact ended up fracturing his skull, and he was pronounced brain dead nearly a week later at just 26 years old. Hexum's death is a loss for his family, friends, and fans. Johnny Ace, singer. This one is strikingly similar to John Eric Hexum's death. John Marshall Alexander Jr., more well known as Johnny Ace, was a rhythm and blues artist. I'll forever love you the rest of my day. He had a number of hits in the 1950s, and it's safe to say he would likely have had a fruitful career. However, Ace had the habit of carrying and playing with a revolver when he was bored. On a set break backstage Christmas Day of 1954, Ace's boredom became lethal. A bass player present at the time said that someone warned Ace about the dangers of being so careless with his revolver. To this he responded, it's okay, gun's not loaded, see, and shot himself in the head. He was only 25 years old. Carl Walenda, Tightrope Walker Carl Walenda came from a family of entertainers and started performing when he was just six years old in the early 1900s. He eventually formed the Great Walendas, a high-wire daredevil act that performed throughout Europe. As far as the audience, uh, they just loved to listen, to watch him uh, perform, and when he would get down on a microphone, they would love to listen to what he said. Uh, he was just had that kind of a, a magnetic uh, personality. There were many accidents and tragedies associated with the act throughout the years. Some of them included Walenda's sister-in-law, Yetta, who fell to her demise, his son-in-law, Richard, who was killed from accidental electrocution, and his adopted son, Mario, who was paralyzed from the waist down in a pyramid stunt. Walenda, however, persisted in his endeavors, till the bitter end. At 73 years old, he tried a tightrope walk between two 10-story towers of a hotel in Puerto Rico, but violent winds and unsecure wiring caused him to fall to his death. Carl Walenda is the fifth member of the family to die while walking the high wire, the latest in a series of tragedies that began in 1962 with the seven-man pyramid, developed and perfected by Father Carl. Leslie Les Harvey, guitarist. Les Harvey was a Scottish guitarist who played in several bands in the 1960s and early 1970s, and co-founded Stone the Crows. He was actually asked to join the Animals, but turned down the offer, opting instead to play in his brother's group. He later joined the Blues Council, a band that recorded only one album before a tour bus accident took the lives of its vocalist and bassist. 
On a stage with Stone the Crows in Swansea, England in 1972, Les Harvey simultaneously touched his electric guitar strings and a microphone that was unearthed. With no ground, Harvey was electrocuted and passed away at just 27 years old. Victor Vic Morrow Actor Victor Morozov, known as Vic Morrow, was an actor. He debuted on screen in the 1955 film Blackboard Jungle and subsequently appeared in a number of other movie and TV roles. In 1982, Morrow was cast in a segment of Twilight Zone the movie. Hey! Bell! <laughs> How you doing? All right. Hey. I can't stay long, my wife's relatives from Florida. He played a prejudiced man taken back in time to different eras where he would have been on the receiving end of fatal racism. In a scene taking place during the Vietnam War, Morrow, 53, and two illegally hired child actors were being chased by a helicopter, which was a mere 24 feet above them during filming. Pyrotechnics from the set fractured the helicopter blades, which sent the vehicle crashing to the ground, taking the lives of Morrow and the two children. Today's tragedy is raising many questions about safety conditions in movie making as well as the labor laws which protect child actors. Brandon Lee, actor. If the name Brandon Bruce Lee sounds familiar, it probably should. He was an actor, martial artist, and the son of the famous Bruce Lee. Brandon followed his father's footsteps and became an actor, with his first appearance being in a 1986 Hong Kong film titled Legacy of Rage. He appeared in a number of lesser well-known movies before ultimately landing the lead role of Eric Draven in The Crow, an adaptation of a comic book series. The role arguably would have launched Lee's career. Unfortunately, an on-set accident would prevent this, while filming, Lee was fatally wounded when he was shot with badly improvised dummy rounds from a revolver, a needless death at the hands of crew negligence. He was in you know, critical condition. Somehow at that point, I don't know, I mean, I've, I've got chills down right down my spine, and I felt that uh, he's not going to make it. Mr. Lee's heart stopped, and efforts to resuscitate him were unsuccessful. Wednesday afternoon, Brandon Lee was pronounced dead. Owen Hart, wrestler. Owen James Hart was born into a wrestling family. His father, Stu, was a big name in the industry, and seven of his siblings were wrestlers, with Owen and his brother, Brett, being the most successful. Well, Owen Hart's got to take more chances, more risks than does his brother, Brett. I look for Brett to wrestle a very deliberate match here. Hart's career, from amateur to WWF contender, started in 1986 and ended with his unfortunate death. In May of 1999, during a WWF pay-per-view event titled Over the Edge, Owen Hart was slated to enter via harness from the rafters of the Kemper Arena. He had performed the stunt before, but something faltered in the equipment that night, and he fell 78 feet, landing chest first on the ropes of the ring. He died of internal bleeding from blunt force trauma at age 34. I think the reason his legacy is going to live on forever, you hear constantly about the, the type of man that he was. Anyone who shared a locker room with him said he was wonderful to be around. So I think the real legacy of Owen Hart is not just, again, what he did in that ring, but who he was as a person. Tommy Cooper, comedian. Tommy Cooper was a Welsh comedian and magician, known for wearing a red fez while performing. Look, it's a blue tie, white spots, blue tie, white spots. You just go, Bruh! it's a blue tie, it's a spot. <laughs> he got his start while serving in the British Army in the 1940s by joining an army entertainment group. His act combined magic and comedy, and he spontaneously borrowed a waiter's fez during a performance one night, which he would wear regularly thereon. His career, featuring TV appearances mostly, spanned almost 40 years. Other people express their feelings through poetry. But tonight, I'm going to express my feelings by speaking to you through my trumpet. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> In 1984, however, Cooper collapsed and had a lethal heart attack in the middle of his televised act. It was at first believed to be part of the show, but people quickly realized that it was not. Steve Irwin, Animal Handler 
Steve Irwin really holds a special place in all of our hearts. And though it was tragic, we can say he died doing what he loved. He's talking to this little lizard, and he's looked at me like that and gone, chop, right on my nose. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a, can you get him to do that now? I'd love to see that. Uh. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> His father was a wildlife scholar with a particular interest in herpetology, which is the study of amphibians and reptiles while his mother worked in wildlife rehabilitation. Steve was thus born into a love of animals and nature right out of the gate. In 1996, The Crocodile Hunter premiered on Australian TV, and a year later, US and UK audiences were introduced to the enthusiastic croc handler. Unbelievable! She's looking around. I'm far more intimidated than she is. He became a national sensation. But unfortunately, while Irwin was filming in the Great Barrier Reef in 2006, a short tail stingray pierced his chest. Our favorite wildlife expert sadly met his end at 44 years old. Does your mind ever wander back when you're lying on the snout of a crocodile and you think of Steve? Oh, I miss him. I bet. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Dimebag Daryl, guitarist. Daryl Lance Abbott, better known as Dimebag Daryl, was a metal guitarist. In fact, he was held as one of the best of all time. Daryl played for a number of bands, but was primarily known as the lead guitarist for Pantera, which he formed with his brother, Vinnie Paul. Pantera released its first album, Metal Magic, in 1983, when Daryl was just 16 years old. Later, a second band, Damage Plan, was formed with his brother around 2003, following the dissolution of Pantera. Y'all are number one. We're back with a Damage Plan to blow it up everywhere. In 2006, Damage Plan was playing at a nightclub in Columbus, Ohio. During their first song, a crazed fan rushed the stage and shot a 38-year-old Dimebag Daryl multiple times before being tackled by the head of security, who also lost his life in the scuffle. Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.